I'm Lee, welcome back to the channel, Fix It For Resetting. We went to the Ramsbottom Treasure Trek quite a while ago now. I think it was last month. And we picked up this PlayStation 4. Uh, covered in dust. So the guy said he did house clearances. So we got this for uh, 20 quid. But we've plugged it in and nothing at all. Did as a dodo. I'll confirm that with you on the overhead camera. So let's get this apart, see if we can find out why it's not turning on and see if we can fix it. Run the intro. Uh, we only paid 20 pounds for this. Guy said he did house clearances. Um, doesn't look like it's been opened. At a quick glance. HDMI ports look good. This model is the CUH1216A, I believe. There you go, you can just about read it on there. CUH1216A. Right, so I'm just gonna plug this one in. Vents are full of dust in here. Right, this isn't like the last one I did with the touch buttons. These have got clicky buttons. And, Nothing. No response at all. Try it with a disc. No, absolutely dead. We have nothing. Right, so it's all unplugged again now. Let's see if this comes off easier than the last one I had in the last video that someone had glued down. It's a bit stiff for this one. Oh God, don't tell me they glued it down again. Oh no, it's moving. Oh, hang on, there we go. Oh, gee. Uh, it looks sticky. Oh, hello. <laughs> Look away now if you're a bit squeamish on spiders. There's a nice web in there with a dead spider. <laughs> dead spider on the front. More webs, more dead spiders. And got a sticky patch that's why that was held on a bit there have we got some spillage all right there's only one way to find out i think we have to strip this down i need to get my little hoover all right get the g tech in i'll uh, reduce the volume so it just doesn't kill your ears that's better all right slightly different layout with the screws than the uh, last one i took apart which was, what was that, a triple one, triple one six A. Jeez. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. Look at that. Look at all that in there. <laughs> Schnice. Right, filth. Let's try and get the bottom off. Now before on the old one I did, this just lifts, lifted straight up, but I think they've done the same with these clips in the corners on this. This is gonna be a pain. Wedge that side up, stick something in there to hopefully stop that side flicking back down. So yeah, just get a little screwdriver, stick it under there. And get your smudger in and just lever it up. Wee. That wasn't too bad. Slide it back. Holy shit. Rust. Look at that. It's full of rust. <laughs> this is going to be interesting. Look at the fan. What the hell has happened to this? Look at that. And look at all that rust. 
Okay, this is going to be very interesting. This thing is uh, ready to snap in half, I think it's so rusted. What have we sold? Spyro Enter the Dragon on the PlayStation 2. All at £5.69. Banger. Okay, well, there's no rust under here, which is good. Is that it? That looks like it is it. Oh, that comes off as well. Where did that come from? Anybody know where that came from? Don't know. I'll find out where that came from. The board's looking okay. And we have got some rust around our USB ports. Thermal paste is still soft in the middle. Right, so where do we start? Checking this out. Just going to get these thermal pads off of there and just put them over to here so I don't lose them while I'm uh, cleaning the board off. Uh, right, I'm going to give everything a good dust down and then we'll see what's what. Unscrew this fan, get this fan out as well. Right, let's start I don't know, poking around for shorts, maybe. No, there's nothing there. Two killer ohms. Let's see, let me get rid of that thermal paste because I'm bound to stick my fingers in it. Well, I have been checking around the board of all the um, capacitors. 0.5. Can't see any shorts anywhere. Point four five. Put it in diode mode. Point four. There's a ground. So that's point four. Over at the HDMI port. Point five. Is that? I think these are the filters. Actually, I can't quite see under there. But yeah, looking around, I can't see any shorted caps or inductors. Point four. These inductors are low, but I think these are four phases. They're point zero eight. I'm not sure whether that's correct or not. Point zero eight. Point zero two six. It was very really low. Point zero two seven. Point zero two seven. But I'm not sure whether they're for the like the RAM or the CPU. Whether these are the different phases. But our caps down here are reading point four. 0 0.47 0 0.47 so all the caps down here are reading correct so I'm not sure at the moment with that one but what I do want to do is check the um, power supply before I go any further with this because like I say you know this has got all the rust on the top of it and the rusty metal plate it is full of dust inside what model APU is this? Model number N14 200P1A. Right, now to test this. Right, I'm just going to unplug my lead from the plug socket a second. So I can plug that in there. Now you don't want to be touching anywhere metal inside here because that's going to hurt. This is powered up. I'm going to test on here. We should get our 5 volts. I'm not sure what pins they are. All right, let's try this again. I think that, that one may be ground. Go back to volts DC. Nothing. 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 So 
I'm not sure I'm getting anything out of this power supply at all. You should at least get standby or some voltage. Right, I'm going to take this apart. Be very careful taking the power supply apart, especially when it's just been plugged in, because some of these caps could be charged and they hold a lot of voltage and power. So I've just got the one screw down in the middle, I hope. Gentle persuasion. All right, go in, see what we've broken. Without the clips, clips are there. God knows how that's held in. Right, now be very careful touching this. That big cap E there could have some juice in it. Let's have a look. DC power. What are you reading? One volt. One volt, we should be all right. So if that's got one volt in it, our fuse should be all right. Hello. Our fuse has blown. Got the meter in continuity. And our fuse down here has gone. Well, look at it. I mean, why is it why is it blown the, the short somewhere? Or I don't know. Once so that slides out of there. I'll have to take this connector out. No, let's get this side up first. There we go. Slide that connector out. Let's have a look at the bottom of the board. It's not looking happy around here. Let's have a look at that. That's all looking a bit brown around there and burnt. This looks burnt actually. That's looking like there might be some damaged traces. What is that under? It's under these MOSFET or regulators there. Could be the heat from there. Is that missing? Where are we? That optocoupler. I'm sure that's an optocoupler. Same as these other four above it. You can see the big black line and the big gap. That's usually separating your high side, your high power from your low power. Which yeah, be your five volts coming out here and your twelve volts out of there. So anything past the line that side is your primary high voltage. But that, yeah, that doesn't look pretty. But yeah, that opto coupler, that's definitely um, had a hole blown in it. It's microscope time. I'm going to get my memory card in here. It's the worst camera in the world. Very, very cheap. Unless someone wants to donate a camera to me, microscope. They're only about 250 quid on. Uh, Amazon, Red Express. This board looks ruined. But yeah, this is like the bottom part of that board, and look, it's just, it's just like charred. I mean, obviously this has been had water in it, but there's that the opto coupler. Yeah, you see that's. That's like cracked and everything. You know, we've got fine traces running through here. And a bit further up, it's just all looking, it's just all looking brown. Right, let's give this a uh, clean up. Let's get some IPR on here. Give it a brush if then this cleans off. Oh, so I don't think that's charred, it's just got like a darker green coat in here anyway. 
but it does look there's parts of it that look bubbled okay so this might not be that bad just put my meter into continuity mode I just want to check like these tracks down here we've got one gap of this resistor comes up full of track comes up to here and I don't think it's getting there yep no it is just didn't have a good contact can't really see where that second line's going that second line is going up to here this comes down along there up there it's hard to see under this dark green part it coming down and in uh, there 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 under that zero resistor is it yeah multimeters are zero I've not got it on continuity but change that we change it so you can hear it, it was there on it yep so that's make a that's got a trace all the way through there path there's the bottom one going to there but see look that's that's broken all the way along there should that be connected all the way along it's all broken off there but if it's part of this big trace we're okay I think well, I've just been looking at replacement power supplies um, on eBay and they're about 40 quid. 30 to 40 quid. Um, I think if I sell this, I would probably put a new one in there. See if I can get one cheaper. Um, but let's. Here I've got a PS3 power supply. So I'm going to see if it's got a similar octocoupler in it and the uh, fuse. Because we need a. What is on here? It's a T6.3. AH. Let's see if we've got similar, something similar inside the PS3. Right, so we have a fuse down here, and that's a T5. Here's, is that all our octo couplers down this side? Five of them there as well. Let's pop this fuse out in this octo coupler. We'll check what the readings are on this fuse because I can't read it all while it's in there. And that fuse is good. I've done it, I finally bought myself some proper flux. Bought some Kingbo. Some Kingbo flux. RMA218. Soda sucker. our fuse out what's written on it, it says t5 of course um, octocouplers which are all these down here we'll use my solar sucker a bit easier okay. hold on folks I've got a pop to Aldi's Nicola wants some dinner Ah, I'm back from Audi with my snackers. Uh, where was I? Uh, I might take a couple, couple of these out. Let's try and heat them up. Push the feet in. They're pretty much falling out. Just clear these last holes and oh, missed. It's much quicker than messing around with uh what do you call it it's much quicker than messing around with wick oh yeah they've fallen out right let's bring this down i'll use the soldering iron to get these off instead of hot air whether there's solder underneath there or some glue underneath there ones i've taken off before i've a glue underneath that let's get some fresh solder again Should just help to get them off. Yeah, 
Yeah, lift those two legs up. Spin it round. Hopefully I've still got you in shot. Take these two legs up. And she's off. Let's just clean these pads up. Right now, obviously these ones were through holes and these ones are surface mounted, but that shouldn't matter. They are different as well. They are different lengths, but we'll give it a go. I'm not sure whether there's much difference in what they do. So I'm just going to bend these legs to the level at the bottom. Let's just do a test fit and see when I'm going to cut the legs off. So I can pretty much cut the thin part of the legs off there. Someone's shouting at the screen, don't do it! Don't do it, they're not compatible. If you are, I'm sorry. Right, these ones, these ones have got a dot up there on the top left. And so is this one, I'm going to put it on the same way. Tiny bit of solder on my tip. Just so I can get that leg and hold it. Good enough, and we'll do on the other side. We'll just get some on now. That all looks nicely connected. That's all clean. All right, let's get this fuse out of here. I'm going to put the other one in because obviously this is a six amp. The other one's a five. It might blow straight away, and uh, it might not. It might at least turn on for us. All right, that's dropped out of there. Let's clear this hole. I was off shot. I was off camera. Well, I've just popped the uh, just popped the fuse out of there. Cleared the holes. There's the fuse that's just dropped out, which is still hot. Yes, yeah, so there is a T six point three. At least it's a lesser fuse. So it'll blow sooner, if not immediately. Solder this fuse on. Down. Right, should we turn this on? See if it goes pop. Living life on the edge. I'm going to sit it back on here so we can mount some plastic if it does go pop. Right, it's unplugged first. Not put my hands near this, might bloody plugged in, that's for sure. So, is this gonna go kapow? All right, we're in, plugged in. Any smoke? Anyone see any smoke anywhere? This is plugged in now. Don't put your hand anywhere near that. You might as well be sticking your fingers in an open plug socket. Okay, so that's well, that's on a few seconds. Let's um, just check this fuse. I've unplugged it. Because you wouldn't probably know if a fuse is blown straight away. Oh. Nope, so our fuse is still good. Okay, let's plug that in. And try not to electrocute ourselves. Let's go into DC. Let's see if we've got any voltage over here now. This would be low voltage, so you should be safe. Five volts. We have five volts. If you can see that, which we didn't have before. So we're not going to have our 12 yet. Oh, Jesus Christ. Don't slip. Right, I'm going to rest them in there. Are you going to stay in there? Right, now what pins do you short on air? Is it pins one and two? Let me, I'm going to unplug this. I'm going to check see what 
pins you ground because you can ground two pins out and it should turn the 12 volt supply on. I'm just going to check. Well, I believe it's these first two that are here, so I'm just going to put a jumper wire in there, save me holding onto it. So, yeah, if you look at the back, that's plain. If you look at this side, you can see all the black wires going in, and it's the first two, bottom one and the second one. Just bend them to the side, make sure they don't touch. So, they're in there. So we'll stick out probes in here. Don't want to bend them too much. That'll do, they'll stay on there. We'll check our voltage on DC and we're going to plug it in. Ready? One, two, three, wait for the bank. Nothing. No 12 volts. Could be that optocouplers that I've replaced is not the correct one. Any voltage on our big cap? Yep, 106 volts and dropping 100 volts. So now we're still getting power into there. So is it that opto coupler, the wrong one, all going wrong? I'm going to have to look up, um, go and wait for that discharge. Also noticed on the back of this board where a lot of that damage was, there's a break in this trace, but it looks like it's still connected. It's coming from here. You can see it comes up, comes along here. Oh, I've given it a continuity mode rather than diode. So you can see it's there, but you can see that's broken. See it's lifting up, there's nothing there. But it's still over this side. It still manages to get there. But you can physically see that trace is broken. And it gets over to the point now where it's meant to. So that's weird. I might repair that. Well I've got my microscope in the way again uh, but I'll show you under here in a minute but this diode, I've been around the board testing diodes. There's one probably down in here, I hope you can see that on the camera. But let me get my microscope recording on it. If I zoom right down in on that, there, that just looks, that looks odd in the middle of that. You turn the lights down. Yeah, that looks strange inside there. When you compare it to the one below that, it's got that little gap, but you know, you, the writing's not in the way, but you can see that looks better than that one there. That looks, that looks like it's blown or something. If I put my meter up the top of there, you can see in diode mode, we go between the legs of that diode there, you can see it's reading as a short. Shouldn't read as a short or open. It should only allow a um, power through one way. If we check this one below, you can see 0 0.62, so that's a good diode reading. Back the other way, you can see like 1.3 volts. So I'm wondering if that Zener diode has gone, Zener diode. Uh, obviously, I don't know what value it is. Usually, these have a voltage rating. Uh, probably have to unsolder that off the board to check to see if we can see. Um, see if we can read what the readings are then on there. So we've got another two up there. See how much they look different. Those two kind of look fine, but yeah, that one, that one definitely looks knackered. So we'll get that. We'll get it out of there. See if we can read what the value is. So I'm just going to flip the board over, see if I can find out where that was. Yeah, I mean, it's all around this damage here. Tiny little thing. Let's measure it out of circuit. Diode readings. Yeah, short. Shouldn't be short. 
back under the microscope. See if we can read what this says. So it's N Z. Is that one five? N Z one five O. So yeah, so I've just been stripping down some of these other power boards and spare boards that I have that I keep laying around for parts. Uh, but we took that Zeta diode off and um, put some voltage through it. And I think it's like a, a, a one volt Zeta diode. So the way I was testing it, I was just putting it through a 1K resistor, putting my bench power supply on there. And you can run like, um, you can run like five volts through it, but a Zeta diode will only let through a certain amount of voltage. Um, some of these other ones I took off that I've got down here quite a few of them a lot of them were um, five volts but I did find one that was just letting one volt through well it comes up as 0.8 of a volt so I'm hoping you know I don't know I don't know a great deal about Zeno diodes but so I'm gonna put this one in there and then we'll repair that trace I can't find my enameled wire. I'm just going to get some solder on these bare tracks. This is where flux comes in to help solder reflow because that is bridging over with that one at the moment. Right, as soon as I can't find me enamel wire at the moment, I'm just going to use a small piece of copper wire. Right, so hopefully that's held on. I'm just going to put some clean it flux off there and get some solder mask on it. If I don't get the flux off of there, the solder mask won't stick. Just dry that off with some hot air. So I've just got some solder mask, some UV. So it sets with UV light. So I'm just going to get a tiny bit on my tweezers. That's probably too much. I'm just going to put it over this track here. Yeah, that's rubbish. That's far too much. A little goes a long way with solder mask. get some of them big blobs off so just want to cover that track up so that's not going to come back off hopefully i mean when we tested it it was connecting from one side to the other anyway right, i've just got my little uv torch so we're going to put that just over there for 30 seconds or so just to cure that solder mask that should go nice and hard and then we'll just put some hot air on there just uh finish the setting of it. Yeah, that looks pretty hard in there now. Let's test this diode now it's in circuit. 0 0.05 that's still quite low. 0 0.05 on that one that is 
That is lower than I would expect. All the others are 0.6. Shall we just go for it? What have we got to lose? Let's give it a go, see what happens. It's only going to go bang, isn't it? Which almost, always makes an interesting video when something goes bang. I don't get many of them. Right, so we are not currently plugged in. So let's get that in there. Right, let's plug it in, see what happens. Wait for the pop. No pop, no smoke. No smoke yet. Right, five volts. We still have our five volts. Let's stick our shorts back in, which is where we could go pop now. Let me bring the multimeter over. Whack our pins in. All right, this could be where it goes bang. Let's quick test. Zero volts. <laughs> Zero volts still. Let's try just jump in the other pins. Let's try again. Yeah. Zero volts. Nothing on that zener. Three forty volts on one side of that resistor. Point eight volts on the other. Is it that one? Is there something wrong there? All right, unplug that. Three hundred thirty-six volts and stay in there. What is this one? Why isn't that capacitor discharging as quickly as it did before? Oh, I'm going to discharge that cap using my me, using me special gadget. What have we got on here? We've got two 2 watts, 27 kilo ohms resistors. Yes, yeah, so we've got two 2 watts, 27 kilo ohm resistors. And this is slowly going to just discharge the capacitor. All I've got to do is put these two together. And that will slowly discharge that cap. I'll show you that wouldn't have fully discharged it. You do see some people just shorting the leads together, but when you've got that many volts, it's not good for the cap or anything else. So there we go, we're down to 45 volts already. Hold that on there a bit longer. Just transfer the heat on the resistors. One volt, safe to touch. So these ceramic resistors are just like the um, ceramic resistors you'll see on any power board. Just cut them off and stick them together. There are calculations you can use. That's for another video. But you don't want to be touching this. I've shown you this 350 volts. That's going to give you a wallop and could possibly kill you. So you need to be careful in here. Right, so what's this meant to be? 0 0.1 ohm? Is that what that sound on there? Is that sound 0 0.1? So I'm just going to measure that one. Blimey, this video is going to be so, so long. 8, eight mega ohms. 8 mega ohms, that's... That's not right. That's get that out of there and have a have a look at that one. Oh, one, one, one on the board. Right, what does it say out of the board? It says it's open. Open. Nothing, nothing happening on and nothing happening in there. Right, let's see if we got a point zero point one ohm. Resistor uh, PS3 is 0 0.330. Let me have a look around, see if I can find something. 
Right, looking at here, we've got a little transistor down the bottom. You can see this corner has got a chunk taken out of it. If we try and get a diode reading from any of these down, we get absolutely nothing. Across from these two, they both sound the same. It's 2.285 volts. Whichever way we go around, it's 2.285. It doesn't matter which way we put our probes around here. It's like there's no connection down to this bottom one. I don't know whether there should be. Yeah, I've got, I've got absolutely nothing. No diode connection through here, so I'm wondering if that big chip there, and it sounds got a big chunk taken out of it. Maybe that's blown. And the thing is, we don't know what value that is. I mean, the only part of the code we can see on there, if I could try and tilt it, I, mean, I think we've got W54 brighten it up yeah so we don't even know what what transistor that is all we've got to go by is W54 because sometimes you can have one diode junction two can connect and have one diode junction you can have two diode junctions from that there I don't know they're all different uh, absolute guesswork just got one off another off a different board I've got laying around it is a 1FW02. It's the right size, but I don't know. I don't know. Let's change it and see if it does anything. So I've already taken the bad component off here and just put in this replacement one on. Who knows whether it's the right one? Uh, but I thought I'd just show this. It's just I love the way the uh, components just dance onto their pads. If you watch here, as soon as the solder starts to melt you'll see that component just move into line here she goes slowly moves down into place there you go it's beautiful right we've been playing let's have a bit of a a recap here uh, god knows how i'm going to edit this video it is a mess i've come to the conclusion there is a short we did play replace this center diode yes we saw this center diode was blown before and we replaced it but if we look at our meter in diode mode we are still getting this low reading of 0 0.05 and that is like a short has to be a short it's just too low it's like a it's it's pretty much a dead short and i've been around having a look testing stuff um, and it all comes back to this chip, this HR1000A chip. Um, and I'm thinking, I'm now coming to think it could be that. I have bridged, I'm not, not sure whether I did it on camera, but I've put a wire across this trace, even though they were joined. You know, we've got the wire on this trace, even though we were joined. I did a quick one of changing this um, little transistor down here. Whether it's the right one, I don't know. Um, and I basically I've been around I have checked all the MOSFETs uh, we have got the gate the drain the source so the gate is up the top so if we go be between the drain there drain with our positive lead and the source and this one they're all they're all reading okay they're not you know we're not reading any shorts uh, I've done that with all the MOSFETs. All the MOSFETs look okay. Um, if anywhere, you know, our 5 volts is ver working. So I think this is our like sort of 5 volt rail along the top. So we know we've got our 5 volts. I think it's more of this 12 volts down the bottom here. Now this chip, uh, we haven't done anything else, have we? No. Oh, we changed this opto coupler. That could be wrong as well. Who knows? But yeah, this chip is the PFC chip, I think, the power factor corrector. So when it turns on, this capacitor that is usually, um, you know, 330 volts when we put it on. I'm pretty sure it's dead now. Yeah, it's four volts in it. So when we turn it on, that should go from the 330 volts up to about 400, I think it is, 410 from watching videos. But yeah, I've looked at the schematics for this chip. I'm not sure if you can see that. There's the HR1000A. 
MPS 1523. I don't think that model number matters. But it's the HR 1000A. So according now to our schematics, turn around the other way because we've got our dot down in the bottom left corner. It's saying 10 is our ground and 12 is our VCC, which is obviously you know your IC supply voltage. So if we do a diode test between our ground, was it that one? Yeah, no ground. Oh, turn it on would help. So our ground and our VCC and there it's like 0 0.05, not 0 0.05, which is, to me that's a short. I'm sure of it, I'm sure that's too low. I'm gonna take this chip off the board and see if that short goes. It might confirm to me if the short goes that it's that chip, hopefully. But yeah, let's get this chip off. So I'm just gonna clean my iron. Just gonna put a bit of fresh um, leaded solder on here to lower the melting point, because I'm gonna use my hot air gun. So just gonna run my soldering iron across there. Just get some, bit of leaded solder on there. Don't worry about any bridges or anything like that. Right, let's get some hot air on it. 400 degrees. Got the tab, the air flows about halfway. Oh, so I'm just going to warm up the area. Warm the board up around the chip so hopefully it doesn't um, blow the board. Sometimes a board can bubble. All right, I'm just going to hold me hot air away from it slightly now and begin to warm it up and then we'll look for this we'll look for this solder to melt before we try lifting it up you can see the solder starting to flow now uh, how are we going to pick this up not that way right so that's it that's our chip off Right, now if we go back between our ground and our VCC on here, let's go back to diode mode. I know the board is still hot, but now if we go between that one there with our ground, also that capacitor is part of the chip. Now obviously now we're getting no, getting no short between them. 1.489 and nothing that way and if we go back to where our Zener diode is we now got 0 0.6 we've got a proper reading 0 0.66 oh, touching the ground plane there can you see that yeah 0 0.6 so that is now a normal diode reading so we've taken that chip off and we've now got our readings back uh, our diode readings back to some normality. So let's have a look on this chip. So our second one in was the ground. It's going to bounce around. Yeah, let's see if we get a 0.05 actually on the chip. So I'm thinking that's gone. So we're going to order some of them from China. Uh, they're kind of like discontinued, not made anymore. As far as I know, can't really see on e any on eBay except from China. So I'm going to go to AliExpress, order five of them. Um, I think it's about, I think it's about three pound with two pound postage. So five quid for five of them. For me, that's going to be about a month's time. For you, it's going to be now. Our new chips have arrived from China. <laughs> so let's uh, get these on the board and watch it go bang. Right, so first of all, we need to clean up where our chip originally was. All right, so let's get some flux on here first. Clean these pads up. And we'll get some fresh solder on them. So we're just gonna use our solder wick. Leave them nice and clean. Be careful, you don't want to take any other components off the board. Let's 
get another fresh piece. Right, so it looks nice and clean, so just give it a quick clean up. And now we get some fresh leaded solder flowed onto these legs. Probably do it a smaller tip, but. That will do. Now we'll take one of our nice fresh chips out of here and hopefully I've ordered the right ones. They look to be exactly the same. Right, I think if I remember correctly our dot was in the bottom left corner which indicates pin 1. I'm not sure if there's anything on this board that tells me where the pin is. Oh, is that a mark there? I'm not sure whether that's a little not sure whether that's a little arrow or not there. You usually have a lot like, a little dot or a little arrow to indicate pin one on most things. Right now I've lowered my air temperature of my hot air gun to I think I'll put it at 400 or 420. So I don't want to get this chip too hot. Yeah, I've got it on 420. Actually before I do that, before I heat this up, let's get some uh, flux on here. Flux will help your solder flow. You can never have too much flux. Right, so let's just warm up the area and then we'll flow down the chip. And we've got 10 of these chips, so I'm not worried about it. Uh, if it destroys it straight away, we could investigate why afterwards. Right, so let's get ready. Let's just get some heat on here now. Try and get this solder amount. out. Solder is melting already. Just going to get the chip into place. And then just going to press down and hold it. Wait for the solder to solidify. So hopefully that's it. And we'll just give the feet a little nudge, make sure they're soldered on. Right, I would say they're all on. Just want to make sure. I really should put a smaller tip on my arm, but you can do it with this. Let's get some flux on there, get some solder on the tip. We'll just gently touch these up. Got a bridge up here now. So clean the tip and the bridge is gone. Hopefully that's in focus, but yeah, they look really nice now. So quick clean down of the flux. Use our hot air just to dry that off. Right now before I think we were showing a short between was it two and four? We have nothing now it was open line. The other thing we were checking was our diode down here. 
this was shorting. Let's go to diode mode. And that is now still really reading as a diode reading, 0.6. Let's get this back together and watch it go bang. Right, now we're going to put the plug in the socket. Let's see what happens. Nothing so far, it's good. Nothing so far. Right, let's check our uh, voltages again. Trying to avoid putting my hands anywhere near there. So we have our five volts over there. Shouldn't be reading anything on here yet. No, nothing on there, which is what we want. I have changed this resistor to a lower uh, reading, a 0.3, I think it was 0.4 before. We've got 334 volts through there. Right, so if we stick our probes in here, this is where it's all going to go horribly wrong. <laughs> They're in there. And we just need to short out pins one and three. Let's try and do it with this. And nothing, still no voltage. Still not exactly sure what pins they should be in. Some say three and four, some say one and three. Let's check. Definitely no voltage on them. Oh, we have 12 volts. We have our 12 volts. So on our cap now, I believe we should have about 400. I think it goes from 330 to about 400. Yeah, 395. That's looking pretty stable. This diode that was shorted out before should be reading... What was that? That was only one volt before. It's showing as minus two. What's this one showing down here? Point two on the diodes. But we are running. This power supply is running. Between pins one and three. So if I take that out, that should be off now. Six volts and drop in. Plug it back in again. 12 volts. Looking pretty stable. By Jove, I think we might have this. Right, let's get it unplugged. Let's get it unplugged and put it back together. Now we can actually see if that console works or not. So let's just check our voltage now it's unplugged. Hundred eight, hundred sixty, and down to hundred and fifty, one forty. Looking good. Let's give it a little helping hand with our uh, discharger. And we're down to three volts. It says minus three because I've got the lead around the wrong way now. But yeah, it's on three volts. Okay, safe to uh, safe to touch. Uh, do I put this all back together? Because it's a bugger to get apart again. Do I clip it all back down? Don't want to push it all back together yet fully. It's all sitting in nicely. It's all clipped in. Clip that in. So we've still got the resistor that is wrong. It's got a 0 0.3 in there where it was a 0 0.1. But that is the only difference. So we st still probably need to change that. But it is working at the moment. Right, I'm not going to fully clip that together. Right, let's bring over the PlayStation. Right, so I have put this all back together and put thermal paste on there. Um, because as far as I know, this might be all right. The power supply blowing could have blown the CPU or anything in here, really. But we're not going to find out until it's back together. So everything is 
connect it up so we plug the power supply into this our pins are nice and straight you want to be careful that you put it in nicely because you don't want to don't want to bend those pins right so that's sat in there it should be all connected up um, should we flip it over so it's up the right way so you can see the lights? <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. What do you reckon, people? Right, so that's in there. Let's plug it in. Here we go. Plugged in. Are we going to get anything? Fingers crossed. We have a blue light. We have the blue light. Is it going to turn white? I forgot to put my mic on. Keep leaving it on the table. <laughs> Give me a white light. Go on. Hopefully, something has just blown the power supply and not the rest of it. She's gone white. Yes, this is amazing. <laughs> right, let's put an HDMI cable in there. Let's plug the TV or turn the TV on, even. Oh, this would be unreal if this works. All right, here we go. Unbelievable. We're on 1080p. We need some buttons. Um, I've got a remote here I haven't tested before, so let's just plug that in. Right, I'll just plug in the remote in now. Let's see if we can get a sync on it. Please. Actually, I'm not sure whether this cable is any good or not. I've not tested it. We have a sync and we are in. There's a lot of people played this. <laughs> long use is that one right uh, I've not got not got the eject button in or anything there's nothing in here is there can't test if there's anything in the thing because we haven't got the then we got it back together, but we are synced. PlayStation is on and working. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Uh, let's get this all back together. Shut it down. I can't believe it. I still can't believe it. <laughs> I cannot believe it. So, well, we do have to put that power supply back in properly. Uh, so I'm just going to time that. Time that's this bit. Um, I haven't got a clue what I'm going to do with that. It's so rusted, it's, you know, bits are snapping off and falling off of it. You know, it's just, yeah, it's just falling apart. Because I'm not sure what it's doing, because there's nothing, you know, it's not, what is it protecting? There's plastic up here. There's nothing connecting on here. I need to give this a little wipe out. So I'm not quite sure what that's doing, but we're probably just going to leave that off. Right, let's get you on a time lapse. Right, so let's get this plugged in again. Switch her on. Have a quick tidy down. Controllers on a sink. Anyone think we've got a disc in here? Nah. Didn't leave me any other surprises. We test it with the uh, Fleetwood Town FC FIFA 20. No, because it's not graphic intensive. I don't think I've really got any graphic intensive games for the PS4. I don't know what drive clubs like, but let's see if it's reading the discs. Should have done this before putting it all together. Where's the old? It's over this side, isn't it? 
goes in smoothly. Let's see if that comes up on the screen. Should log in as someone really. Right, so there we go. Drive Club recognises it. Right, I'm just going to have a quick play with this and we'll see if the fans go nuts. Right, so Drive Club plays without any problems. Fans are still super quiet. Let's go and check out our network. I'll skip this part. Don't need you to see all my connection details. <laughs> this is probably going to fail because of my stupid Vodafone router. For some reason, whenever you plug everything else in, although no, 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 it's got it. A lot of times with my Vodafone router, you plug something new in and it's it, it will connect to the router, but it just won't connect to the internet. But that looks like it's done it. That looks like they're connected. I just want to see. See what uh, software it's on. System, system information, system software 651. I think this might have just become more valuable being on 651. I'll have to double check that. Can't remember what the system software is meant to be. But if it's old, if there's an old system software, it makes the console worth more because it's hackable. Or not hackable, um, I think you can put custom firmware on it. So automated day out downloads, I want to make sure these are off. So I think this is good to go. Right, there we have it. I am so chuffed with that. Um, you won't understand how chuffed I'm with that. To, to kind of like break it down and work it out and find out it was that chip. Um, that's kind of like a first for me to go that deep and find a problem. All the stuff from China, especially an IC chip and um to put it in and work in it's probably the first it's probably the first time I've, I've managed to do that obviously i've worked on other power supplies where it's just capacitors and other bits and bobs but yeah i'm i'm kind of like dumbfounded how this is working now and that i figured it out so you know what has gone wrong with this maybe a lightning strike surge of power blown the power supply up um it could have been damp i mean this could have got wet or could have had something spilt in it because that is so rusted. But I'm obviously going to test this for a bit longer because obviously there's one component in there which was the, um, it was originally like a, a little 0.1 ohm uh, resistor and we've got a 0.33 in there at the moment. Whether that'll make much difference, I don't know because when you put resistance in it adjusts, it, um, it affects the um, power of the amperage. Um, I'm not sure what it's doing in the power supply. There's no schematics or anything, so it's hard to tell. Um, if you have any idea, let me know. But I'm chuffed. I'm just so glad I've, I've fixed this. But And if you've enjoyed this video, please give us a like. Please comment. Please subscribe. Please share it with your friends. Um, hit the notification. Hit, hit, hit. Gone back down south. Hit the notification bell um, to receive notifications when I upload more videos. I've got another playstation 4 i picked up that i need to look at um the guy said it was working it was just overheating fan was going crazy but i've literally just opened it up um i was just i wasn't going to film it i was just going to clean it out but i've opened it up and there's liquid damage so that will probably be maybe the next video but yeah i hope you've learned something hope you enjoyed it and hopefully i'll see you in the next one thanks for watching